This thing we are doing is a relay race. Don't allow the devil deceive you that you are special. There is no corridor you are running that somebody else has not run. You are special because it's God's work. But you are not special because a thousand and one people have run the race you are running. Whether you are a territorial prophet or an atmospheric prophet or a world prophet or a prophet that deals with the marine, you will be shocked that somebody and many people have done what you are doing. That's why the Bible said without any contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And so if you want to journey far, one thing you must do is to honor those that carry the kind of graces that you carry. Don't let pride rob you. I know the place of human worship. I know the place of human deification. Because some of these realities have been bastardized. Notwithstanding, they are realities in the spirit. Without any contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. We are an arrogant generation. Because we think everything is about revelation. You may know every doctrine in the Bible and preach as though you are talking with the tongue of an angel but you will be shocked that you will go nowhere because this thing is a relay race bad things will be handed over and the way you inherit grace and bad things is by honoring them don't be part of those who are mentored on facebook they come and tell you how dare you talk against someone that have gone ahead do you know how many wars he has won for god do you know how many battles he has fought for elohim and then somebody comes on, on Facebook and then is beginning to train you and is mentoring you in the path of rebellion. Even if a father is wrong, pray for him. Because the honey is usually found in the carcass. Even God knows that these men are not perfect. Just the same way you and I will not be perfect. God knows their limitation, yet he anointed them. Yet he gave them an inheritance. Your job is to decide what they carry. Honor them and collect it. You are not worshipping them. But there is something they have that your generation must receive. So the reason you honor them is because there is a heritage. Do you know Elijah was a man of anger? Terrible anger. That Elijah can kill battalions of soldiers. And he will be so conscienceless about it. How can you kill over a hundred men and you are not moved? If I be a servant of God, let fire come down and burn you up. When James and John wanted to do it, Jesus said, stop. God doesn't approve of such anger. Yet, without the mantle of Elijah, Elijah will go nowhere. Even when God got tired of Elijah and wanted to sack him, he didn't just say die. In 1 Kings chapter 9, from verse 16, 17, he said, go and anoint Hazael as king of Syria. Anoint Jehu as king of Judah. Anoint Elisha as prophet in your stead. Because God knows the man's character is wrong, but there is something the man carries. He can't bring it to heaven. If he brings it to heaven, earth will suffer. Your anger has made me to disqualify you, but there is something you carry. You can't return to heaven with it. Go and find men and put it on them. Don't walk up and be part of those who are exposing the nakedness of their fathers on the internet. Don't be part of that generation. The reason the son of Noah was cursed was because he didn't know how to manage his father's nakedness. It's not in your place to reveal their weaknesses. Pray for them and honor them because of what they carry. I'm not teaching you human worship, but I'm telling you how men become relevant in this kingdom. There are many things that will take you 10 years of praying that a man will just lay his hands on you and you will enter. Many things. <laughs> Pastor E. Adeboe told the story. He said in their days, when you are looking for fire, in the ancient times, they used stones to start fire. And sometimes you will do it from morning to evening, you will still not be able to generate fire. He said, so there are two ways of getting fire. If you try to use the stone and it doesn't work, Go and climb a tree. Anywhere you see smoke coming from, go there, you will fetch fire. These men have already on their own torch. And instead of spending your whole life to get a, a spark of fire, honor them and collect what they have and go away. I'm telling you why men don't transit. We have revelations upon revelation, but we can't see the manifestation. If Bishop Aginasari comes here, he doesn't need revelation. They will talk for 10 minutes and he will say, everybody with clutches, bring it. 
and 50 people will drop clutches in your own eyes. You have preached on the doctrine of healing, yet headache is not healed. Are you not wise? That there is something this man has just beyond quoting scripture. And he will not leave this world until I take it. How can't we discern that men are the banks of heaven? That when God wants to hide things, he doesn't hide it in angels. He hides it in men. And then you are struggling. What if you just honor a man and collect? Jesus, the son of God, went to John the Baptist and knelt down before John. Why? Because John, according to prophecy, is the one that will create a way for the Lord. So even though he's the Lord of glory, he needed to submit to the way maker for him to walk into it. And John said, I should be baptized of you. He said, no, suffer it to be so for now. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. The Bible spoke concerning Joshua. He said, Joshua is the servant of Moses. He didn't say Joshua is the servant of God. He said, Joshua is the servant of Moses. That was God talking. He spoke of Elijah. He said, a man that poured water in the hands of Elijah. You wonder how men become mighty. They become mighty because they discern unction and they honor them. They serve them and they receive them. Our generation will be robbed if we are mentored in rebellion. I'm not saying we should endorse the mistakes of the fathers. In fact, one of the honor you will do to your father is not to repeat his mistakes. But while he's yet there, don't despise him. Honor what he carries because there is something if he leaves this world with, you are doomed. He said, get me a savory venison that I will eat so that my soul can bless you. That's how men are made. Gather around me, you sons of Israel. I will tell you your future. He didn't say I will prophesy. He's saying I will shape your destiny. He said, Judah, the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. And if you like, pray, Judah is king. When he told Jacob, I have blessed you. Esau came, he said, I have no more blessing. I have made your brother lord over you. No matter how smart you are, Jacob is your lord. I made him by power. That's what this man carry. And if you want to transit, you must discern the graces that are in your territories. Don't be among the foolish generation that despise the fathers. Dishonor them and laugh at them because we think we have revelation. In the day of trouble, we will discern our weaknesses because what they carry, we will never inherit it. For transition to take place, there is a measure of brokenness. I know you are the reigning star. I know when you stand, 10,000 youths gather around you. That man may not even have 500 people anymore, but he carries a mantle. Renard Bonke told a story. He was coming from a Bible school and he saw while he was walking through England, he saw a house and the name was written. And he recognized that these were the famous evangelists that shook the world. And he entered there. When he wanted to enter, they stopped him. The evangelist shouted from inside, leave the young man. When he entered, he said, I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you. What do you mean? He would have died, but he can't go to heaven with the mantle. I was waiting for you. The hunters, that's the name. And when he saw him, he fell upon him. And what he carried, he said, I give it to you. Before they had gone, they got to Germany, the man died. So what was keeping him, he was looking for a man who can discern the mantle so that he will put it on him. And they had gone, we come to shake Africa because somebody gave him a mantle in England. Revelations don't make men patriarchs. It's inheritances that make men patriarchs. You think you know the whole Bible. After 50 years of your life, you will discover you will go nowhere. Today, when we honor fathers, people come and attack us. I don't have the stature to endorse a father, but I know what they carry. And I know if I don't discern it, I will never be a partaker of it. I'm telling you why we pray, but we move nowhere. Some of you have used your tongue against men that God himself calls his servant. Did you not read about Moses? Moses took an Ethiopian wife. It was against the law of priesthood. And Aaron and Miriam stood up and challenged him. Before Moses spoke, the anger of God came down. How dare you? He said, every other prophet I speak to in visions and in similitude. But Moses, my servant, I talk to face to face. Why were you not afraid? Was God endorsing human worship? No. But there are cadres. There are structures and they are ranking in this kingdom. 
Revelation has made us arrogant. And we know nothing. Because the proof that you know is not what you say. You say, thou shalt know the truth. The truth shall make you free. How come you know all the revelation about healing yet you can't heal headache? Because there is something that you don't have. You want to transit? Some of us need to repent. We need to repent. I'm not saying the fathers are perfect. Every one of us know their excesses. Some of them literally are money mongers. Some of them literally are manipulators. Some of them literally are tyrants. But we choose to look away from it. We pray for God to help them. But we know they carry something. And they will not leave this world until we receive it. Because the inheritance is not given. It's taken. When Elijah wanted to go, he said, give me a double portion of the anointing. He said, you have asked the difficulty. What makes it difficult? Are you not going to heaven? Do you need it there? Because these men don't give these things. We take it from them. We take it. And the way we take it, we honor them so much that even if they don't want to give it, it will fall from them. Hope you know Elijah was carrying it to heaven. But the whirlwind that came kicked the man to out of his hand. How dare you? There is somebody on ground that has honored you with his life. It was the whirlwind that blew the mantle from Elijah's hand. They will not let go of it. But by honor, we will collect it. Because our generation needs those dimensions in order to bring deliverance onto Jacob. There are people dying of sickness. But mantles need to be handed over for us to be able to wage war against the darkness that is coming. There are people dying of immorality. There were certain revivalists that walked through your borders that when they cry, men repent. You need to collect those mantles. If not, iniquity will dominate your generation. We don't honor fathers because they are perfect. We honor them because they are custodians. Transition is not a joke. It's a deep kingdom business. Today we look at fathers. We call their names in reproach and in indignation. And we think we know what we are doing. It is time that we reveal to us our foolishness. I don't know. Somebody needs to repent. Because there's a window of mercy. Some of you have used your tongue against the wrong people. That's why you are struggling. Somebody may stand up on Facebook and, and say what he wants to say. Don't worry. By the time all of us become 60 and 70, you will discover that we will become few. That's why you will know it's not enough to come on Facebook and open two or three Bible verses. The things that make men, they are the secrets of God. It's not just about spiritual authorities. Make no mistakes about it. When I say fathers, I'm not just talking about your spiritual fathers. I'm not just talking about pastors, prophets, and apostles. I'm also talking about elders. Some of us, our arrogance is terrible. You see a young preacher comes. A woman who should be his grandmother. He said, go and bring water. Because he's an apostle. That's why we don't make progress. How come we cannot discern? Some of the women you are sending on errand, they should lay hands on you to secure your destiny. Somebody is in a family, he has lived the family life for 60 years. No miscarriage, no family crisis. His children are doing well. You wake up at the age of 24, you say you are an apostle. You say, come, I want to pray for you. You should kneel down for them to pray for you. Because you don't even know if you will live up to 30. They have long life. They have rest. They have prosperity. And then you dishonor old men who should be your father and your mother in the name that you are a prophet. You can't talk to anybody until they kneel down before you. And a grown-up woman, a grown-up man who should be your grandfather will kneel down in front of you because you are giving word of knowledge. You may not give that word of knowledge for six months before you die. I'm telling you how men transit and how men are preserved. Even if you were a guest speaker, when you see somebody older than you, discern what he carries. Because long life is a blessing. It's not about apostles and prophets alone. Our generation is arrogant. 
That's why we receive nothing. It's only in our generation you see a boy of 25 years having high blood pressure. Why? Because they have not received things in our generation. You see people get married. After three months, married breaks up. We have not inherited things. We have not inherited things. Revelations have made us arrogant. Don't let any gift make you lose the things that matter. And don't let anybody mentor you into arrogance. The fathers you despise today, how did you give your heart to Christ? Did you give your heart to Christ in your bedroom? It's the same fathers you despise today that preach the gospel, organize the crusade that led to your leading, your giving your heart to Christ. How did you learn the basics of Christianity? Is this same man today that suddenly know nothing that made you grow in God? Today you know so much. Please sit down. Hey, hey. I'm telling you, some of us young prophets here, young apostles, young teachers, young pastors and preachers here, you may need to leave this conference and go and kneel down and apologize to your parents. Else you will never go far with all your revelation. Some of us, we need to go and kneel down to an elderly person and say, I repent on behalf of my generation. We carry Bible. We are explaining scriptures. We have become rabbis. The second thing that makes for transition is to understand the protocol of honor. Who to honor, how to honor, and to remain in honor so that God can promote you. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just said this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website oracomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.